Welcome to CFAN Sports, the channel that is dedicated to the nation of Seattle sports fans. My name is Dave. This is Kevin. How you doing, Kevin? I'm great. How are yourself? I'm excellent. Kevin, before we get going, I'm going to have us um, take care of a little business here. If you could do us a huge favor, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Please leave us a comment. Yes. We'd love to be able to address those. Um, that's what we're going to do going forward here. Okay, let's jump right into the Seahawks. And like us. Well, and like us. You gotta like us. You don't have to like us. Well, you don't have to, but no. <laughs> anyway, all right. So, <laughs> right this weekend, we had the uh, rookie mini camp. Um, so, yeah, the rookie mini camp, the thoughts and, came, thoughts and news that came out of the, the rookie mini camp start with uh, Eskridge. Okay, we had 31 people that showed up for the mini camp. As far as uh, 31 kids showed up, we also could have second year players if they had not got on the field. So there was a lot of Daryl Taylor news. Uh, Eskridge, I guess, was just everything he was billed as electric. Uh, he matched up against Trey Brown and uh, he kind of torched Trey a little bit. However, one thing I did read as far as that is they could not jam him at the line of scrimmage. You know, Eskridge got out there, used his speed. Um, do you hear, see, hear anything about uh, Eskridge on your end? I kind of like what Pete had to say. He said he is fast. Yeah. And he has a speed that they were expecting. But until you see it in live, it doesn't do justice. He also said he's really strong and he's built solid. So mm -hmm. it goes to the you know, the line of attack, you can't, can't stop him at the line. He's, he's solid. And once he breaks away, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah. And so I, I really think that they're going to, if they press him, I think you're going to blow by him. And yep. I think if they play off of him, then he's just going to set down and, and Russell's going to have an easy completion. And he's going to be able to work those, those DBs and get some yards after catch. Uh, the second thing I, I read about was stone four size. Good old Stone. I uh, read that he was very impressive, looked all of the part, great athlete. They were talking a couple of things I read that he could compete this year. Um, Dwayne is not getting any younger. He ha could have a couple of games where he's off the field. We actually could see um, Stone step up into that uh, line as early as this year, which is something I, I didn't expect to read. I no. thought he was a project. Yeah, I didn't expect to read that either. But we also have the right side, too. I mean, I know we're going to train him to take Dwayne's spot. But, I mean, there's competition. And, and any time you've got somebody that's quality and mm -hmm. can play, they're going to they're gonna play. Well, I, you know, as long as he's able to get out there and continue to impress, mm -hmm. uh, wow. I mean, you know, he looks like a mountain, just a mountain with legs. Um, okay, the next thing was is what I really want to uh, to get into is Daryl Taylor. This I think is probably the most well. Everything I read is how excited they are for him to take over that Bruce Irvin role. Yeah, uh, the longer that KG Wright stays out, um, the more this kid's going to get a chance to show that he can be that strong side linebacker. He can set that edge. He can he can blitz from that side. I see this being a great, great transition for this kid. And he looked all the part. Uh, he's yeah. fast, physical, excited. Yeah. Everything I read was just, he, he stole the show. Yeah. The, and and yet yeah, this is against the rookies. Yeah. Um, and we have to, we have to kind of set, temper our enthusiasm. <laughs> However, he was a second round draft pick that they um, moved up the draft board to get. Yep. He's got talent yep. and, and could come in and be an impact for us right away. And what that's going to do is it's going to be able to move Brooks to that weak side, which we saw Brooks excel when he went to the weak side. It's going to make Bobby that much better at middle linebacker um, and then put him over there on the strong side. In our 4-3 de defense, I really see um, him getting a lot of production and a lot of work if he can – and, and if we do bring KJ back, then KJ's not going to have to, he's not going to have to play a full 16 where he's out there on the field, you know, 80% of the snaps. So we could go 50, 50 and he could take and learn from KJ on, on how to be that strong side linebacker. Kevin, your thoughts. 
Uh, yeah, same thing. I mean, everything I read, like I said, is just he he was sold to sold to rookie camp. I mean, there was that's all anybody was talking about was mm. was um, you know Daryl Taylor, and he's got the size, he's got the quickness. He, I mean. What is there to not like about the guy? I don't the know. The only thing I don't like is he's got a steel rod in his leg. Well, yeah, I and mean, that's 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 the part I'm not enthused about. But as long as it doesn't as long as it doesn't temper or make it in him uh, more susceptible to earn injury, I can get behind this kid all the way. Yeah. Well, um, one of the other things I was going to talk about too is you mentioned you forgot to mention is our other draft pick uh, Trey Brown, hmm. and I heard a lot of good things about him. He is very competitive very aggressive and he can keep up with most <laughs> most wide receivers i guess there was a few times or uh, you know well, he got eskridge got him a little bit yeah got him a little bit but yeah. um the, pete was fired up about the guy he said that he was really impressive he is going to take his shots at reading mm-hmm. the quarterback and he'd be aggressive and I like that. Oh, I, I agree completely. You're, one of your boys impressed a little bit. Our little our little Stanford fella. No, oh, he was yours. I, I was thinking Cade Johnson all the way, but you were the one that was talking about Connor, man. Right. Well, and, and, and you know, from what I understand, he, he uh, impressed as well. But I still think it's going to be difficult uh, to get on the field for him. Um, I think there's just too much good competition even against undrafted rookies that, that are in there. I think there's too much good competition. However, there's a couple of guys like Cade was, was sidelined with a, with a, a hamstring injury. Um, so he couldn't get out there on the field. And, and any time that you could jump ahead somebody and show what you got because somebody else is injured, all that's going to do is make you look good. Uh, Pierre Oliver, Pierre Oliver, there's good things to be said. Uh, by Pete, they're going to start him out at guard, but they definitely have uh, some center dreams for him as well. So he uh, he he looked good. He looked everything is uh, looked billed as as a great guard that's going to be able to come out there and be a product producer for us. Hopefully, you know somebody that's going to be able to step in that's not going to have some of the the problems that we've got from our backups that we've had the previous couple of years. Yeah. Well, my pick to click was Josh Johnson. And I guess I didn't read a lot of good things about him. I didn't read a lot of bad things about him. So, uh, no. although I did hear them talk a little bit about uh, BJ Emmons and the battering about, ram, the battering ram, and he yeah. looked pretty good on the field. So you know, like we said, I mean, it is going to be tough for any of these guys to really make it. There's so much depth on that team already. It's it's a pretty impressive team. Right. So this all those facts came out in Pete Carroll's press conference. Another thing that came out in Pete, Pete Carroll's press conference is we're kind of seeing all over the NFL this trend that uh, because of 2020, that we're able to restructure contracts put some of the money into future years, you know, bring down their cap hit numbers so that you go out and sign other players. Well, Pete was, was asked specifically about Bobby and Russell. And Pete said, we didn't, we didn't need to. We got all we needed to get done without having to restructure Bobby Wagner and Russell Wilson. And guess what is so nice about that is that that sets us up in future years not to be strapped to that money that we saved this year and that's a good thing however kevin however okay here's here's what it's going to save if we were to restructure russell's contract it would save us 12 million if we were to restructure bobby's contract to save us 6 million that's 18 million dollars under the cap now if we if a player that that they wanted came available i think they would make this move right away because our window right now is open yeah However, if they don't do this, they don't take this 18 million and push it in the future. What made all of the trade talk of Russell nonsense this last year is that if we were to trade him or move on from him, it would cost us $37 million. We would have a cap hit of $37 million. And what we're going to do with this $12 million, if if we were to do that, we're going to push that in the future. So if we have a bad year, okay. If this team has a bad season, we we haven't had a we haven't had an injury from Russell. No, we haven't had an injury from DK. I mean, there's there's things that could go wrong 
I mean, just look at the 49ers last year. And Russell at the at the at the next Super Bowl is sitting up in the suite next to next to the commissioner, and he's looking all forlorn and, and upset. And now he's expanded his his I'll go to 20 different teams. Okay. And I'm not happy again. I think that they would have had some serious talks had that not been a $37 million cap hit that they couldn't just chew on. This team would be absolutely gutted if they would have had to go into the 2021 or season already $37 million behind. So if we take that and we push it into next season, we're still going to be looking at that same $37 million cap hit. That's what this $12 million would go. Right. And we can't, we cannot survive as a team if we do that. Now, if we do do that, okay, if we don't do it, if we don't restructure Russell's deal, now it's a $20 million cap hit. Still awful, but it's a little bit more palatable. Right. If, if you feel the need that you have to move forward without Russell and you get uh, a, a, another team to give you, maybe it's the Raiders giving you David Carr, or maybe it's, you know, making a deal with Houston or making a deal with uh, Miami for Tua Tunga Iola. I mean, at that point, we can start to kind of listen because we are not already so backed up. And I really think that, uh, that Pete Carroll came out and said a lot of nice things. Hey, we didn't have to do it, so we didn't see any need to. He, that's what he, that's what you that's what, that's the way you should spin it. Right. But I think that there's some ulterior motives in the fact that if we need to, we have we have a backdoor claw. We have a backdoor out of this. Well, you and, don't feel this way, so you tell me your thoughts, Kevin. No, you know, and I agree with what you're trying to say is that we do have a backdoor out of it, and I agree with that. I mean. My take on it is I love Russell. I mean, I think he's an outstanding quarterback. He's an elite quarterback. But, hey, if he doesn't want to play for Seattle anymore, then let him go. Right. I, I don't want to. But, you know, if if we tie ourselves up for a couple more years by extending his contract 100% and he gets worse and worse, we have a bad year because something happens, a couple injuries that we can't control, things go – I know you're talking about going off the rail or – are you know having a downer year or a doom year i mean whatever you want to call it i just i believe that having that out if russell goes off the rail or his camp i wouldn't always say it's on russell but mm -hmm. if he does what he did this year last year there's no way the fans would have accepted him leaving this team but what happened and things that his camp said last year made it more bearable let's put it that way mm -hmm. because if we are in a situation like uh green bay is right now with aaron Rodgers, and him saying i'm not playing i'm going i want out mm -hmm. then i'm i'm saying leave right and if we could trade him then let's you know if we can get something back for him yes that's what you want to do now i don't believe as long as we have russell if he can stay healthy all year and the defense. And I, I think even if Bobby goes down, Barton's going to be there. He's not as good, but I think Barton's a solid middle linebacker. Okay. Think, Kevin, here, here's, uh, I know I don't mean to stop you there right now. If I had one glaring concern for the Seattle Seahawks, 2021 is our depth at linebacker. No, I, I don't. Well, I, that's, I, I, I don't have the faith that you have in Barton. Um, I think Brooks is is nice, but it's his second year. I think Daryl Taylor, all the things I said about him, he's still going to be a rookie. Um, Here's the yeah. thing. I watched Cody Barton play college ball. This guy is solid. He is very, very intelligent, mm -hmm. very systematic. Kind of a, kind of a, a, a little bit bigger uh, Lofa Tatupu. Correct. Uh -huh. Absolutely. I could see that. Yeah. Maybe and not as athletic. He's not as athletic. And yeah. he's, not, he's not, he's not a Bobby Wagner. He's no. not, but he, he is solid enough to take Bobby's spot if Bobby gets hurt. And then we got BBK as a backup for the other two. I know you're laughing, but I know. <laughs> Go dogs. Go. Uh, BBK to back him up on the other two linebackers positions. I'm not as worried about it. Yeah. Would I like another linebacker? 
Would I like KJ back? Absolutely. But I'm not as I'm not as worried more worried about that depth as I am about the running back situation that we talk about every week. So right. for me, linebacker is if Bobby gets hurt for some reason, I don't think that's gonna doom our defense. If Russell gets hurt, that will do that will He's uh, over. Well, I don't know if it's gonna be over, <laughs> but it's I, gonna, no, I do. It's going to be a challenge. Yeah, yeah, and and here's the bad part about that, Kevin, is if, if for some reason Russell goes down, we don't have a 2021 pick or no. 2022 first round pick. No, that goes to New York. Yeah, I mean when Tom Brady went down, okay, they they still had a first round pick coming up the next year. When David Robinson went down, and they they the Spurs tanked, you know, they they had a pretty nice guy to come in. And play and and drafted in the first round because the simple fact was is they had that first round capital and when that major player went down they were able to uh, bring in somebody good. We both agree with that. If, if Russell goes down, I don't know. I mean, Drew Brees went down last year. I thought they played very well without him. I mean, it's a system, right? Russell is an elite quarterback, in my opinion, not as good system last year as New Orleans had offensively. Mm-hmm. I think with Shane Waldron that things could turn around and we might be able to win some games with a, a Gino. mediocre or you know and I'm not hey, saying we're not calling Gino mediocre we no, don't know he, he's an yeah. NFL quarterback he's not exactly he's mediocre. but in in the grand scheme of things he's not a Russell Wilson so that kind of brings me to the you know we're talking about this first round pick you know why are don't we have this first round pick it's because we have Jamal Adams so uh, from what I understand, if we could get him under contract and, and extend him out and, you know, front load his, his contract, we can free up even more space. From what uh, I heard this morning, um, that right now we're $7 million uh, under the cap. Yep. Um, we only have Trey Brown that's not signed, and, and he's pretty much locked into his numbers. So right. we, we've got $6 million to play with, um, and, and we could free up another 4 or $5 million with uh, – with Jamal Adams deal. So, I mean, we, we have some money to play with. I mean, I, some, I talk about it like we have, you know, 9 million in my back pocket, which we don't. Money. The simple fact is, is, is Jamal could be coming in and, and uh, you know, get him under a long-term contract. And, and that could be the money that we use. And then we're not, we're not mortgaging the future. If worst case scenario, in case of emergency, break glass, trade Russell that option is is a, available to us yeah and we're I, not going to be strapped no as bad and be honest with you I think they would probably restructure restructure Bobby's contract first knowing that it's not going to hurt them as much in the long run right um and if they can't do that then they'll go after Russell and and they've already had discussions you know they've already had discussions well they, they, they Pete and Pete said said this much that they've talked to him yeah, and they and and they've talked to Bobby and and they've had these discussions and it really isn't doing anything other than just moving the money around. Right. I mean, he's still going to get paid. It's he's not losing any of his guarantees. So all it would do to all it would do is make the team better. Well, yeah. Kevin, and so yeah. anyway, I agree one hundred percent. Let's not extend those guys unless we absolutely have to, and let's just make it work. So, but I tell you. It, 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 we could see a real doomsday scenario if a couple of bad breaks go our way. Um, our whole team could come to a, a screeching halt. This is this is my worry, and because we've been riding high for a long time, I, I honestly think at the end of this, uh, we could lose John, or we could lose Pete, not John. I think we could lose Pete, and I, we could lose Russell all in the same year. I, I don't think that uh, I don't think Pete is really willing to go through a rebuild process i don't think he's going to bill belichick it and, and want to start over i i think you're right i i don't think he's gonna well but you never know i mean he's still he still acts like the youngest coach in the league even though he's not i i just find it i i see that scenario i see a rebuild a rebuild as being we're going to be in for some lean years for for a while um and maybe that maybe i'm just being doomed if you guys think I'm being a doomsday person, put it in the comments. Tell me Dave is wrong and Kevin's right. Or you know what? Tell him Kevin's right. Or Kevin's right. Kevin's wrong and Dave is right. So leave us a comment. Make sure you subscribe. 
and come back next week for Seattle Sports Weekly at CFAN Sports. Before we leave, I got one thing to say. <laughs> I thought that was good. It was great. Tell, tell me, Kevin. Last year, we were injured. We didn't even have a running back that was healthy for most of the season. Right. Our defense, Jamal Adams, was injured. Uh, Marquise Blair was Blair. Yep. Uh, we had quite a few guys that were hurt, that were in and out of the lineup. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have a cornerback besides Griffin that was healthy all year. No, well, DJ Reed was. Well, he go down. came in like eight games into the season because he was on, uh, you know. Ire, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so we still managed to win 12 games. <sighs> Well, Kevin, you're you're rosy right now, and I'm a little I not. Rosy. And, and I just believe that the only person really that could hurt us, and I don't know if it could hurt us to the point, I mean, we're in the bottom 10 draft picks, is that if Russell gets hurt. Mm -hmm. And if he can stay healthy, we always have a shot at, at winning. Now, yep. and even if he does go down, I think Shane is the guy and the system that they're putting in place that I, I think they're putting in place. I, I don't know for sure, but I think the s system that they're putting in place is going to benefit somebody like Gino or, you know. Oh, well, I definitely think that, yeah. A different quarterback that doesn't have to be elite like Russell that could actually, we could still win games with an average quarterback instead of an elite quarterback. So once again, if you think Kevin's right, drop us a, say Kevin's right. That's yeah. all you got to do. Kevin's right. You think I'm right? Then you say Dave's right. But uh, yeah, well, we're not always going to agree, but we're always going to be best buds. Kevin, I'll talk to you next week. All right. You got it. Peace out. Out. Oh.